30 years ago, Steven Spielberg's Jurassic Park brought dinosaurs back to life in a perfect mix of practical and groundbreaking digital special effects. Jurassic Park fever took hold in the early 90s. The book, The Making of Jurassic Park, inspired many filmmakers. I read this over and over, cover to cover. In this series, I'll be taking you to the exotic Hawaiian film locations that featured in this book and in the movie. It was an adventure of a lifetime that I never thought I'd be able to do. But in true Jurassic Park style, life found a way. We are at another Jurassic Park filming location here on the island of Kauai. This location was used to double as Costa Rica for an important scene in Jurassic Park between Dodgson and Dennis Neardry. They conspired to smuggle dinosaur DNA off the island and they plan to do it in a can of Barbasol shaving foam. The bottom screws open. <laughs> you can buy this shaving foam here in Hawaii it's four or five dollars. I bought a can because I'm bold and it's a good souvenir. Yeah, it's cool to be here where Spielberg would have lined up those uh, shots and see it for real. And we've just had some tacos and they're awesome. So if you do come to this location, I definitely recommend checking out the food. And yeah, it's just a, another great Jurassic Park location on the island. It does look different to the film because there was a hurricane and it wiped everything out. So there's a new building and some of the palm trees were ripped away. Despite the impact Hurricane Aniki had on the location, it is still easy to picture the scene. I managed to locate some of the palm tree footprints that were damaged by the storm and were visible in the scene. I found the spots where Jurassic Park author Michael Crichton did his cameo too. I took my first edition Jurassic Park book along with me from 1991 I actually managed to cram in some reading whilst I was on Kauai. I just felt like it was something that had to be done. There's a major hurricane that's turned its course and it's now coming straight for us. Grandfall was our hotel. It was a category five hurricane. So we are currently in the Marriott Hotel where Steven Spielberg and the cast and crew stayed famously in the hurricane of 1992 during filming. I think they were like 99% done on production and uh, the hurricane hit and they all had to take refuge here. Cast and crew keep each other calm. Steven Spielberg makes it his mission to entertain the children and keep their minds off of the devastation outside. Uh, and I think some of them thought they might die. Actually, this could be quite serious. We might die. That's not funny. And during the hurricane, Spielberg got his cameraman, went out there and essentially filmed a load of stock footage that actually ended up in the film. Steven, Dean and a small camera crew head out to the beach to capture the hurricane on film. It was surreal thinking of the devastation that happened right in this spot in comparison to the peaceful surroundings of today. Yeah, this is the very hotel where Spielberg, all the cast and crew stayed. Pretty amazing, really. Really nice hotel as well. We left the hotel and headed to a nearby location where we could get a better look at the seawall that was used in the film. When I flew into Kauai, I recognised the seawall location from the plane window. And then again later, when I flew above it in the helicopter on the way to Jurassic Falls. I remember as a child reading about Storm Aniki in the book, The Making of Jurassic Park. It was so interesting to me that the film crew pulled together and used their can-do attitudes, skills and abilities to help the community of Kauai following the storm. Aniki is the most powerful tropical cyclone to hit the Hawaiian Islands in recorded history. Winds reached 165 miles an hour and caused damage worth 3.1 billion. And sadly, six people lost their lives in the storm. Storm Aniki was powerful enough to blow away most of Rick Carter's sets, 
and even the row of eucalyptus trees that were used in the Brachiosaurus scene were gone forever. Following the devastation left by Storm Aniki, there was just one scene left to shoot, but nowhere on Kauai to shoot it. In order to shoot this scene, a new location was found on the neighbouring island of Oahu. We will visit this in the next episode. Another Jurassic Park filming location. This is at Allerton Gardens on the island of Kauai. And just behind me here is the fig tree that was used in the filming Jurassic Park, where Alan Grant, Lex and Tim discover the dinosaur eggs and realize that they're breeding. Never come out and play in computer. I'm a hacker. That's what I said. You know what this is? Being here, in this location, standing under these giant fig trees was a surreal moment. It looked exactly as it did on the screen and it was very easy to spot the areas that the screen used. Our tour guide, Dr. Bob, was awesome and he was just a fountain of knowledge. He literally was our own Alan Grant. Even if you're not a Jurassic Park fan, just visiting these giant fig trees is incredible. It's really cool to be here. I found a way. Other Jurassic Park scenes were shot here at Allerton Gardens, but the exact locations are harder to identify. I believe I located the area that was used for the maintenance shed and the jungle that leads up to that shed. There is also a scene where the Ford Explorer passes a Dilophosaurus paddock. There is a network of small roads around the gardens, often being identified as the location for this scene. Reading through my old trusty Making a Jurassic Park book, I finally found one of the few behind the scenes location photos from this scene. Here you can see a small wall in the background. It's located just on the other side of a small river. And in this image you can see the river in the background which is on the left, which would lead me to believe the exact spot is just opposite the fig trees on the other side of the river. Now this one is for the hardcore nerds. This location was used for a shot that was in the original 1993 film trailer. Ellie Satzler is seen pulling a leaf off the tree as she passes in the jeep. This does have a payoff in a later scene, the, the Brachiosaurus scene where she's holding the leaf in her hand, but one can only assume that runtime may have had a part to play in its redaction from the final cut. Many other movies have been shot here at Allerton Gardens, but that aside, it is just a beautiful place to visit. So many tropical plants that I've never seen before. You also get to taste some exotic fruits, most of which I've never heard of. What does it taste like? Anybody? Melon. Does it taste like melon? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or orange, actually. Okay. But it doesn't taste like cheese. No, it doesn't taste like cheese. We left Allison Gardens and headed north to Hanalei Bay to locate the beach that was used in Alexander Payne's The Descendants, one of my favourite films. En route to Hanalei, Cat clocked that we were actually driving on the same highway that was used in the film. It seems everywhere you look in Kauai has been a film location at some point in time. Malay, what can I say? This was straight away one of my favorite beaches in Kauai. It was easy to spot many of the locations from the descendants and I can totally see why it was used to represent the beauty in Hawaii, specifically Kauai. And as I say, cameras do not do it justice.
On our trip back to the apartment, we reflect on a day full of experience that will last a lifetime. Not just the incredible places we visited, but the interesting and friendly people we met. In my mind, the true value you get from traveling is the people you meet. Our time here on Kauai is now coming to a close. We will be heading to the island of Oahu for our last episode. As always, I thank you for watching and I hope you can join me in the concluding episode of 30 Years in the Making.